Hi, I'm Doug Carroll with InsidersGuideToFinance.com with a video that's hoping to clear up some of the many confusions around reverse convertible securities. And there's actually several distinct sources of confusion. In part, they're fairly complex instruments, as we'll see, but also their name is quite misleading. So what is a reverse convertible security? A reverse convertible security is a type of structured note which is a debt instrument that has a derivative buried inside of it. And unlike the typical debt instrument where the investor is expecting to get a return that's tied to some rate of interest, be it fixed or floating, on structured notes, the return to the investor is tied to the performance of the derivative that's embedded inside of the security. In particular, reverse convertibles fall into a category of structured note known as enhanced yield products. And in this case, yield doesn't mean an enhanced or higher rate of return. At least it's not guaranteed. Remember from one of our other videos on the many meanings of the word yield, one of the potential meanings is cash flow. And that's the implication of enhanced yield in this context. If the investment works out as the investor hopes, they're going to receive relatively high cash flow. And just to give you a sense of that, over recent years, when similar maturity and credit quality debt instruments have paid maybe 1% to 2% or in some cases dramatically below that, enhanced yield securities have paid interest rates of 8, 15, in some cases over 20% if the investment works out as the investor hopes. Now, one of the primary sources of the complexity is the embedded option. Because in particular, with reverse convertible securities, there is normally an exotic option embedded inside of the reverse convertible. And it is typically what is known as a knock and put option, which we'll describe at least briefly later on. And oftentimes, there's more than just a single derivative. Many reverse convertibles also have an auto call feature, that is, they're automatically callable under certain conditions. And many will also have conditional coupons, that is coupons that are payable only under certain circumstances. And it's all those options that are the source of the enhanced yield. In effect, by selling all these options as part of the structured note, that means the investor has the opportunity to, in effect, receive the premium from selling all those options, and that's the source of the higher coupon rate or the enhanced yield. Again, if things work out as the investor hopes. And the confusion that results from the name, reverse convertible, well, that arises from the fact that it's misleading in the sense that normally when something's described as reverse, it has either the opposite contract features or the opposite structure of a strategy. So for instance, an option trading strategy known as a conversion has a sister strategy known as a reverse conversion. In the one, you're short a call and long a put, in the other, you're short a put and long a call. Or, for instance, repos and reverse repos. One is a loan of money collateralized by securities. The other is a loan of securities collateralized by funds. But with a reverse convertible, there's not a reversal of the typical flow that results from exercise of the conversion feature. For the typical convertible bond, the bond holder has the right to convert the bond into securities, most commonly the common stock of the issuer. With reverse convertibles, it basically works exactly the same way. If the conversion happens, the bondholder gets shares or the equivalent value in cash. So there's no reversal of the contractual features, rather it's a reversal of the benefit. The holder of a convertible bond is only going to convert if the value of the stock they'll get from conversion is more than the cash flows they'd collect from holding the bond. Unfortunately, with the reverse convertible security, if the conversion happens, that means the bond holder, the structured note holder, is getting stuck with shares, or the equivalent value in cash, that's likely well below the value of their initial investment. So, what about the embedded derivative? Well, as noted earlier, the type of derivative that's embedded in these structured notes, the reverse convertibles, is known as a knock input option. Now, for people with no options background at all, that's going to sound a little bit scary, so let's uh, address this in, in layers. 
First off, a put option is an option to sell, but it's the holder, the person who's long that put option, that has the right to sell. You'll recall earlier in the discussion we talked about being short or selling this knock and put option. So since the owner of the put has the right to sell, that means the seller or writer, or the person who's short the put option, i.e. the reverse convertible holder, they have to buy the securities at the strike price of the option. Now, the way reverse convertibles are set up, that strike price, the price the note holder will have to pay to buy what is being put to them, the securities they'll have to buy, is the initial value of the reverse convertible. Now, that's just a plain vanilla put option. This is a knock-in put option. What's a knock-in? Well, a knock-in is a type of barrier option. And so unlike the plain vanilla put or call that has only one significant contract price, the strike or exercise price, barrier options have two significant prices. A strike price, the price which the holder has the right to buy or sell, but then a barrier price, which determines whether the option goes live or ceases to exist. So in the case of the options in embedded inside of the reverse convertibles, if the option never knocks in, the reverse convertible security holder never has to buy the securities of the, of the reference assured. They never have to buy the stock. So what about the barrier price? Well, barrier price is options market lingo. In reverse convertibles, the equivalent would typically be referred to as either a trigger price or a threshold price. Now the barrier, or again, trigger or threshold price in the uh, term sheets one would get in connection with a reverse convertible security, is typically at 60 or 70 or 80% of the initial value of the reference asset, the associated stack or index. Well, to be specific, let's say we're looking at a reverse convertible where the threshold or trigger level was set at 70% of the initial value. What that would mean is if the reference asset or stock went up or declined, as long as the decline was no more than 30%, i.e. the value of the reference asset didn't drop below the threshold or trigger price, the investor would get back their initial investment, their par value, plus any coupons they had earned. However, if the price of the reference asset, the associated index or stock, hit or fell below the threshold, at that point the investor would be stuck. They'd end up having to buy, that is the stock or index is being put to them, they would have to buy at the strike price, i.e. the par value of their security. So rather than getting back their par value, they would either get shares or the equivalent value in cash of the depreciated asset. So this is where reverse is actually descriptive in the name reverse convertible. Look at gain loss profiles or exposure profiles for both regular convertibles and reverse convertibles. Both diagrams are set in a frame of reference where we're looking at the values on the vertical axis, that is the value of the convertible security or reverse convertible security, and the horizontal axis is the price of the reference asset in case of the reverse convertibles, or the stock that the regular convertible is convertible into. Note that for the regular convertible security, if the value of the stock is below the equivalent of the strike price, the crosshatch on the horizontal axis, the investor doesn't suffer the downside. They're going to collect the cash flows, the coupon and principal on the bond, what's known as the investment value on the convertible. But if the price of the stock the bond is convertible into rises, you'll note there's increasing value because the farther the rise in the price of the associated stock, the greater the conversion value of the regular convertible bond. But look at the reverse convertible. The exposure profile, gain loss profile is opposite. Because you'll note to the upside, the gain is limited. No matter how far the rise of the associated asset, the reference stock or index, the best the investor can ever do is to get back their principal amount plus any coupons they've earned. But note they can suffer to the downside. 
Now again, as long as the decline in price doesn't pierce the threshold, in our example of a 70% threshold, as long as the value of the reference stock or index didn't decline by any more than 30%, the investor would get back their full par value plus any coupons they earned. But if the decline in the value of the reference asset pierces that threshold, the investor suffers all the downside. Because you'll note, as the price of the reference asset declines, the value of the reverse convertible gets less and less and less. Now, one more point about the name of reverse convertibles. The name is not very descriptive because, of course, the flow of the conversion isn't reversed. But if reverse convertibles had a name that was actually a descriptor rather than just a name, they wouldn't be called reverse convertibles, they'd be called adverse convertibles. Because if the conversion actually occurs, it's clearly adverse to the interests of the investor because they're getting stuck with shares, or again the equivalent value in cash, of depreciated assets, securities whose value is likely well below the amount of their initial investment. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page to see other videos on a range of investment-related topics. Or you can go to the website, insidersguidetofinance.com. At our website, in addition to the free video shorts, there are a series of modestly priced, in-depth training videos with running times of approximately one hour each that go into a number of subjects in greater detail. The website and Facebook page also contain information about open enrollment programs I will be presenting over the next few months and my recently released book, The Insider's Guide to Fixed Income Securities and Markets.